People, we have a lot to talk about. Joining us now, founder of Life Flip Media and Life Flip Daily, Eric Mitchell. Also joining us, managing editor of Newsbusters, Curtis Halk. And also with us, Jenny Tear, investigative reporter with The Daily Caller. Thank you so much. Eric, let's start off with the misinformation campaign that's happening across so many media outlets. I was just telling Jenny before that I was on CNN's website and I saw that it said Israel tells Gaza civilians to flee. So I click on it. Then I go into the article and it doesn't even mention it. It's all talking about this is happening to the Gaza civilians and the children. They're climbing through the rubble. It's almost it's almost difficult to find the correct information out there. The facts. It's it's not out there. If you leave it up to CNN and MSNBC, we would have zero information. In fact, they want us to be that there's no water and fuel and all these things that we hear about in Gaza. But how many rockets are they firing every hour at Israel? They seem to have a plenty of fuel, plenty of rocket, plenty of technology. And I know AOC and our little terrorist gang and MSNBC loves covering them, want us to feel sorry that there's no fuel in all this. This is a very well-organized terrorist, a monster organization that is out to destroy Israel. And some reason, the left-wing media is just, they want to play the woke game and want everybody to feel sorry for a terrorist, which could you imagine this on 9-12, any of the networks in our country saying and supporting terrorists in any way, and 7,000 people on a bridge, the 50 that interrupted a college football game yesterday and weren't arrested right on the spot. It's just absurd how woke left-wing media has become supporting terrorists. It is. And when we send our reporters out there to cover the protests, the number one question we ask is, how do you justify, how do you defend the beheading of babies? And they'll say, you know, it's, it's fake news. It's fake news. Jenny, you're a reporter. You're a journalist. It's not fake news. And then you even show them the facts and they're like, oh, well, the media is controlled by the Jews. Literally, this is what they all say. Exactly. That's what's happened here. And in fact, they've taken Hamas at their word and it completely blew up in their face. Multiple legacy media outlets that trusted Hamas, the terrorist organization, to tell them that Israel had actually bombed a hospital and killed 400 plus people in Gaza. That ended up being completely untrue. And they had to walk back all of that and issue corrections. That was a major uh, you know, mistake on their part. And then at the same time, the Associated Press style book is telling journalists, to stop referring to them as terrorist organizations and to say that Israel's an occupier. I mean, it's completely crazy. And Curtis, uh, a lot of these uh, talk shows on the other on the other outlets, they don't even push back. I want you to take a listen to Representative Jayapal. She was on Meet the Press and take a listen to what she said. An explosion at a hospital in Gaza City. The Palestinian Health Ministry says hundreds of people killed, many more injured. The Palestinian Health Ministry is saying the Al Ahly Hospital, which is in Gaza City in the northern half of Gaza, took a direct strike from an Israeli aircraft. Well, that was a different soundbite that we played. Um, so, do we have the JPL one? We don't have the JPL. Okay. So, anyway, you'll see just how they. Every reporter says the same thing back to back to back to back. Curtis, it's it's almost orchestrated. Is this done on purpose or do we just have reporters that simply can't think for themselves? I think, Lydia, yeah, yeah, there is that, too. I mean, I think it's the irony in all of this is after six years, uh, you know, plus years uh, since Donald Trump came on the political scene down the escalator, saying both sides is um, is not really a thing. Only the facts and the truth matter. The media have suddenly rediscovered both sides of them. You know, Hamas terrorists committed their acts on October 7th, slaughtering over 1,400 people, maiming others, leaving others with trauma that they'll be dealing with for the rest of their lives. And now it's like, no, 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 hold on a second. We got to go here from the other side. We got to see what, why did, why did Hamas want to do this? We got to hear about their motivations and it's a labeling game. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book. It's pro Palestinian rallies. It's not pro Hamas rallies. It's not pro terror rallies. And they don't actually play what's actually being chanted at a lot of these protests that, you know, uh, a lot of journalists have gone out and covered. What does from the river to the sea mean? What does globalizing Antifada mean? Well, if they would have to explain those things, uh, the public, would, people who aren't in the know on this would realize, oh my gosh, these people are crazy. These people are diabolical. Mm-hmm. And then 
Curtis, just kind of switching gears ever so slightly, but staying on the media when the main mass shooting happened. My sister called me up and she said, do you know that there's been 500 mass shootings in the last year? And I said, uh, did they mention she goes, it was on ABC News is from their chief justice correspondent. I said, first of all, they're including gang shootings in there. They're they're purposely kind of finagling the stats and they're trying to make it seem like there's been 500 white guys that have gone out there and killed massive amounts of people when we know that's simply not true. So I, how do you combat this type of misinformation, this, this misappropriation of the facts? It's disgusting, lady. It's completely inaccurate. They are cooking the books to the highest degree. Uh, this gun violence archive that they use, its you, I think it's four or more people just shot. And, yeah, obviously that includes gang shootings. You know, I think it's Northwestern University has a much better metric that I believe has to have a certain number of people killed in order for it to be considered a mass shooting. But they do this on purpose to push and push and shame and shame and shame people who support the Second Amendment into supporting mass gun control and confiscation. Um, and there's no sort of nuance at all with this particular issue. Right. Eric, your thoughts, uh, 30 seconds to you. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sick of the way they use gun violence as some pulpit to take weapons away from people. They can't even, it's, everything's an AR-15 with these folks. And as somebody who's proudly served as a United States Marine, we don't have, those aren't weapons of war. A weapon of war is like a bazooka or something really big that none of us can own. An AR-15, we don't get those in the Marine Corps. I haven't found anybody who served that has them. The media just needs to open their eyes and see that half of the stuff they're making up, the rounds that they're saying that the shooter used, they identified it to an AR-15, it goes to an AR-10. It's simple Google to find out the information to get it correct, but they, instead they want to politicize and take weapons away. And then, of course, they neglect to mention the fact that the guy is mentally ill, right? And we've yeah, been saying that that's also a key component in all of this. Eric Mitchell, Curtis Houck, and Jenny Terry, you'll be back with us. Thank you all. Thanks, we've, we've got a lot more coverage to talk about.